This video is looking at an A-stable circuit. I've built one just here. A-stable means that when it's on, it wants to go off. When it's off, it wants to go on. It can't decide what to do. It's never stable. That's what A-stable means. This is based upon the 555 chip. So I'm going to start off by drawing the circuit, because I think that's an important skill. So there's my 555 chip. And all students should know how to draw this. So we have our power connectors down to 0 volts, which is pin 1, and up to positive, which is pin 8, just here and just here. We have another connector also going to positive, pin 4, this red wire here, which is called the reset, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. And we have this little capacitor down to ground, and that's nominally 10 nanofarads, and you should always quote that value like that. That's our starting point. And then we have our three timing components running down the edge of the circuit board. So they are a resistor called RA. And in this case, I'm using a 1 kilo ohm resistor. And that connects to pin 7. It also connects to another resistor, which is nominally called RB, which in this case is 6K8. And that connects to pins 6 and pin 2. And then it connects to a capacitor, which in this case is 100 microfarads, labeled C. And these three components make the timing. You also notice we have an LED as our output. We could have any output we like, but in this case it's an LED, so I have my resistor and my LED going down to ground and that's my 555 circuit and you should be able to draw it just like that. Instead I was going to talk about this red wire just talk about this red wire just here this red wire just here is called in the data sheets the reset but I think a better name for it would be the enable and I'm going to show you what it does. I'm going to take it out of the circuit and what you'll notice is it's made absolutely no difference to the circuit whatsoever. However, if I take pin 4 and now connect it to ground, you'll notice, oops, yeah, dodgy connection, you'll notice the circuit stops oscillating. So pin 4 is an enable. When it's connected to ground, the circuit doesn't oscillate. And when it's not connected to ground, the circuit works as an A stable, but it's very bad practice to have an input not connected. So we should always make sure that if it's not connected to ground, then it is connected to positive, like that. So that's our enable input, and that can be used to control the A stable. Now let's try and measure the time period of our A stable. So we need a stopwatch. So here is my stopwatch. and. The time period is the time that it comes on and off for. So I'm going to count my way in. Three, two, one, start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that took 10.7 seconds for 10 oscillations. So what we can work out from here is that our time period, T, in this case is 1.07 seconds. The reason I recorded 10 is because it's easier to record 10 reliably than it is to record just one. So now we're going to try and calculate the time period, which we've already measured. I've got my time period equation here, and here these two equations are the same because dividing by 1.44 is the same as multiplying by 0.7. So I'm going to put my values, which I have earlier, into this equation. So we're going to write it out now. So we get T equals 0.7 times by, RA needs to be in ohms, so one kilo ohm is 1,000 ohms. It's two times RB in ohms, which is 6,800, times by the capacitance, which needs to be in farads, so it's 100, and micro means times 10 to the minus six. So we're going to need a calculator to work this out. So here's my calculator. We'll just put it in place there. So I'm going to go and do 0.7 multiplied by 
open bracket, a thousand plus two times six thousand eight hundred, close brackets, times by one hundred times ten to the minus six equals one point zero two seconds. And if you notice from before, our time period that we measured was t equals 1.07 seconds. Okay, and those two values are pretty close to each other, but why are they different? Well, they're probably different because this value here is normally approximate. The capacitor is unlikely to be 100 microfarads. It's got a tolerance of 20%. So it could be anything between 80 and 120 microfarads, and that would obviously make a difference to our equation. So if this equation works really well, we get the time that we actually measured. Now the oscilloscope screen is showing the timing diagram for our ACE table, and as you can see, the output's going on and off repeatedly, and the time period on the bottom axis is around about one second. I'd like to demonstrate what happens now if you turn these timing resistors around if I take out the 1K and the 6K8, and I put the 6K8 at the top, the first thing that we're going to notice is the time period shouldn't stay the same. I don't know if you can tell, but that's perceptibly going faster. And if you have a look at the, eight, the trace on the oscilloscope, you'll see that it is actually going you know, quite a, a lot quicker. But there's something else important as well. The waveform is now no longer square. The mark, the on time, is now much longer than the space, the off time. So the 555A stable never actually produces a square wave. The mark is always longer than the space. If you make the RA quite a small value resistor, and the smallest you can use is 1K, then in actual fact, the mark and the space are reasonably similar in time period, and you get a reasonably square square wave, but it's never actually square. So if you want a proper square wave, you'll have to use a different type of A-stable.